Hello everybody, this is Maniac for Lego, and we are here today with a comparison video of the different variations of Superman. Only time will tell if we're going to get a uh, fourth version of Superman, whether or not in his superhero outfit. But, for right now, I'd like to compare all three of these versions which have been released between 2012 and 2013. So let's take a closer look at each of them now, starting from left to right. First one we have is a classic version of Superman, which has only been available in one set. It was available only in the set number 6862, Superman vs. Power Armor Lex. That was a $20 set released in 2012, and it had a lot of potential because, well, just look at the set itself. Although the basic model of the set was, well, let's, alright, let's forget about the set it, um, but let's take a look at the minifigure. Um, what we can see with this one is the classic version that most people are familiar with. The blue and red and yellow really go well together in this one. And you can see the S, or should I say, symbol of Krypton meaning hope, in the middle of his outfit very well. Very well seen um, to, you know, to indicate that it is an S. We also have a very stern face for Superman and the classic curl on his hair. As we spin him around, we still have a very nice cape. And as we tilt his cape up, so you see his torso, we got some back printing, which shows more of his strength. As we switch his face around, you can see he has a more smiling face. So he's a little bit more confident. Maybe he's trying to say something clever to an evil villain such as Lex Luthor. And, you know, has a feeling of confidence with him. This one would be more of a, you know, a serious face, but still a nice minifigure to get. And like I've said, this is only available in one diff in one set, originally for $20. The next version we have is the Clark Kent version of Superman. Although it doesn't particularly count as his superhero outfit, we do get to see that he is changing into it by ripping out his shirt and showing the Superman logo. This is only available in one particular... I don't know if I can call it a set, but this is available with the Batman the Movie, DC Superheroes Unite, DVD, and Blue... DVD set. I think it might be with the Blu-ray, but I'm not sure. I bought this with the DVD version. And it does say on here, Clark Kent slash Superman Lego minifigure exclusive. And it's only with certain purchases. It is actually more expensive than the regular DVD release. Um, well, this version also is $20 with that DVD. And this is probably the more main reason why people would buy it. So you can see very clearly his classic, you know, business suit torso. And it's also got a similar stern face that we have from the first Superman, only this one has classes, so he's he's not Superman, he's Clark Kent, right? <laughs> um, we also have a nicer trim on his hair, similar to the computer programmer from Series 7, and again, very nice look on the torso, I actually like that it's not a, um, that we have this rip design because it's a classic and almost re most, most recognizable thing about Superman's changing into costume next to running into a phone booth and then just appearing with his superhero outfit. As we see the back of him, you can see there's no back printing and no back face. Oh well, it would have been nice to see a back face, but I'm not sure how far it would have been extended. Um, the, f the face in the front pretty much captures what Clark Kent would be looking like in a regular scene, but maybe a little bit less calm. I mean, this one's a pretty serious look on him. And maybe if maybe in an average setting, he wouldn't always look so serious. The last version that we have is the Man of Steel version. And he's noted noted as that because he appears in the Man of Steel reboot of the Superman series. At least as far as this movie goes. I don't know if they're gonna reboot the entire series, but this film re-chronicles the origin of Superman and not really considering his, you know, his villain, Lex Luthor, it actually considers more of his first villain, General Zod. So what we have in this version, you can see lots of differences in the torso um, in comparison to the classic version. This one has a lot more of a silver trimming along the 
uniform, and it is also depicted that way in the movie. Um, also a darker blue to him, so it's less classic, I guess you could say. We still have the S in the middle, but it has it in a larger emblem, and has the S looking a lot larger as well. It's almost a little hard to tell that it's an S, except for you look for the little slivers on the sides of the S. Um, and it also has it in more of a gold trimming instead of a yellow trimming. We also have the same face on this version, and I've actually noticed this version has a slightly less colored, uh, less flesh color to his head. When I looked at these right before comparing them, I actually noticed this slight color variation between them. As we lift them up to the... I hope you can see that, because this one's actually a lighter color. I don't know if it's because of the plastic, or if it's because of the coloring itself. But I just found that to be a little interesting. This version is available in three different sets based on the Man of Steel movie, as cheap as thirty uh, as cheap as thirteen dollars, and as expensive as about seventy dollars. You can see he does have back printing and more of that silver trimming on the bottom and on the top of his torso. Why so much silver? I'm not really sure why they went with that choice. On the back of his torso, you can see that he has a laser vision set of eyes. It's a very serious face. It, we don't have anything that represents him being calm or being happy. He's just serious and then really mad. Kind of like in the one of the later scenes where he's fighting General Zod in that movie. Um, where he has ready to, his laser vision in this sort of facial expression. So this one's a lot, you know, darker. Not only in color, but also in personality. Um... We also see a lot more of a silver trimming on him, so I feel like it's a little bit less humble because of that silver on him. It's all over, and, you know, it may it may look make him look kind of cool. Excuse me. It also kind of drags away from the main attention of the S, or should I say symbol of hope, and some of the other fine details. He also doesn't have a yellow belt the same way that the classic version does, Instead, this one has what looks like this little curvy thing. I'm not sure if it's a belt, even. In fact, in the movie, it didn't look like a belt at all. Or even those kind of red-looking underwear things. Not sure exactly what it's called on the outside. But, you know, that kind of area is not shown on here, just as it is in the classic version. Um, this one, it's... When you see it in the movie, it actually looks like one big suit, one big jump thing that you, you kind of, like, like feety pajamas, you know? It's a, it's a leg and torso combo that you just slip into, instead of it having the, you know, this is the top and this is the bottom. So, as far as these Clark Kent and Superman figures go, they were really impressive, and to be honest, I really like the classic version the best. Being rare in a $20 set... And also being just a, you know, a fine thought of what Superman looks like to most people. Um, it was just enjoyable to get this minifigure, and it's always fun to have him um, in different areas. I think you guys remember, uh, when I first reviewed the Power Superman vs. Power Armor Lex set, I had a funny intro with it. You should check out the review if you haven't seen that intro, because it's, it's, it's kind of funny, I thought. <laughs> um... The Clark Kent version was very impressive. I did not really expect that, but I was really enjoying it um, because it had uniqueness and it also gave us a look at a Lego version of Clark Kent, not just Superman, but, you know, his secret identity for the Daily Bugle. And as far as the, the Man of Steel version, I think you could say that it's not my favorite. Um, although it does have a, you know, a unique appearance, I think the silver is a little bit too much on him. Um... The S may be a little too large and, you know, trying trying to be an emblem, but also dragging away from some of the other details on him. It seems fine as far as his face and, you know, because one side of his face is exactly the same as the other. And I kind of like the idea of him having laser vision um, shown on the minifigure's face instead of it being something that you would just attach, you know, separately or probably not attach at all. Um... But it's still, I don't know, I guess it's not really my personal favorite.
So thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I apologize if for being a little long, but um, be sure to watch my Superman reviews of each of these um, minifigures sets. I guess you can call it sets. Because you have the Batman, Batman the movie, DC Superheroes Unite has been reviewed. Superman vs. Power Armor Lex has been reviewed. And as far as the third version, well, I reviewed the Metropolis Showdown set. I don't have the other two Man of Steel sets. Um, I'm not really sure if I would even plan on getting them. But I did review at least one of these sets from the Man of Steel movie. So thanks for watching this video. We'll see you next time.